and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. What I just read sounds like uh, the news. It sounds like our headlines today, but it was actually spoken by Jesus over 2,000 years ago, and he was telling his disciples what to expect near the end of time, just before he would come back to take us who have him in our hearts to be with him forever. He also said that when we see these things, though, we know that his return is imminent. It's from Matthew 24, verses 6 to 8. While none of us know specifically when the end will come, we can certainly see the signs. I'm Dan Wheeler, and this is Finished Strong, and I'm joined by Terry Steen and Brian Rowland. And guys, Jesus told us the signs, and we're seeing them all around us. Mm -hmm. It's kind of mind boggling, isn't it? You know, we've lived all of our lives and we've heard things and we've seen some things, but I don't think it's ever been more poignant than it is today. huh? Especially so when it comes to the Jewish nation, uh, mm -hmm. the nation of Israel, uh, how, many, how people have turned so many things around and the hate that's coming out and anti-Semitism. It's just amazing to me. Never thought... I never thought it would turn out like this, <laughs> but it's, that's what's yeah. happening. Yeah. Well, we didn't think we'd be alive. I remember growing yeah. up, we'd always heard about it, that, you know, the Lord could be coming soon every New Year's Eve. But now with the things that are happening, we, we know it's coming soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything has aligned. All the prophecies have been fulfilled. And you're right, Brian, Israel is the focal point at the end of all time. And that is certainly mm -hmm. the case today. But, you know, we've discovered that, God really told us how to prepare the end times. And Terry, he gave us 10 things in the New Testament in 1 Peter that we need to be doing. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Yeah. And uh, I, I was reading in Peter and realized that he was preparing us because he knew the day would come. And as we're mm -hmm. seeing there's some people freaking out. There's some mm -hmm. people that are excited. Everyone has voices in their head or people they listen to that are impacting them and how they feel about how things are going. And Peter told us in the fourth chapter of 1 Peter that we're to be clear-minded. And I think he knew ahead of time that there would be so many things that would confuse us and people wouldn't know what to believe. And, you know, the reality is, Nobody can make you think what you don't want to think. We can have self-control over our thoughts, can't we? And, and he said in the seventh verse, let me read it. The end of all things is near, which he warned us. He said, therefore, be clear minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just interesting that the, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, of course, is self-control. James talks about self-control of the tongue, but Peter here is talking about self-control of our mind and of our thoughts. You know, Timothy said to not have the spirit of fear because we can control our thoughts. And so it was kind of interesting as to why he says, control your thoughts so you can pray. If we're scattered, if we're doubtful, if we're not believing, if we have those thoughts in our head, we can't effectively pray. And if we ever needed to pray, it's now, isn't mm -hmm. it? Sure is. Sure is. The second thing that he tells us is to pray always and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we read that in Psalms 122, and, and it's the sixth verse where it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I may those who, uh, who love you be secure. And, you know, I was looking at that and thinking, we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem daily. We're supposed to be doing this. And we're thinking now about all that's going on and there's further sink from peace, right? So people, people are being killed. It's war. And that's going to happen. The Bible tells it's going to happen. But what I, when I look into it, the praying for the peace of Jerusalem is actually <clears throat> praying for Christ to return. Because until Christ comes back and sits on the throne, there's not going to be peace in Jerusalem. Mm. So we're actually praying for his return. And as more we pray for his return and more we look for it, 
the sooner it's going to come, I think. He's, he's, he's right at the cusp right now because all that we're seeing. But that's what I get out of that right now is praying for the peace. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem all the time. I pray for them and, and, and for the people there and the leadership there. But I also pray for Christ returning because I know it's going to be true peace in Jerusalem. Well, you can see that people have no knowledge of the word of God when they're out on the streets just shouting hatred and mm -hmm. death to Israel and, you know, from yeah. the, the land of the sea and calling for their the total annihilation of Israel. They just don't know what they're doing. I mean, they're mm. speaking against God's people. And we do need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which um, Pam and I do every day. But you're right, Brian. I never quite thought of it that way. We are praying for Christ's return when we will have ultimate peace. And one thing I wanted to add on that first point about being clear-minded, Terry, I think when we're clear-minded, that's when the Holy Spirit can really speak to us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know you yeah. guys uh, have had moments where you feel like God just dropped something into your head and you're like, oh, that's the answer I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. I think that's being clear-minded and being open to his voice. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And following up on uh, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, it reminded me of our last two podcasts uh, mm -hmm. with John Hope. And mm -hmm. uh, anybody listening today, if you haven't listened to the last two, which I think were number 108 and 109, they were a two-parter. And John specifically talked about how mm -hmm. he and his wife every day pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And mm -hmm. that's something that I have to honestly say I haven't done. So it, it was kind of a, a push to me to begin that process. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we've already had requests to do a part three and part four <laughs> on that one with John Hope. People just love him. He's fascinating. His knowledge of the Bible is inspirational. We all need to be spending time in the Word. Yeah. The third thing that we read about in 1 Peter 4 is that we need to have a fervent love for fellow believers. Now, I had a pastor once who said you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. And when you're really loving your fellow believers, you're going to be giving. And um, Pam and I have had an experience lately which has made us realize that and do it, put our love into action. Our good friends, you guys have been praying for them, George and Tori, George has been in the hospital for over two weeks in a coma. And while he's making, you know, improvements and little signs of movement here and there, boy, poor Tori has just been through the ringer. And so um, Pam and I took her out to dinner the other night just after she was done with her visiting hours. We went out late just so she could have some social interaction. We took her a bunch of food one day and left it on her porch you know, things that she likes, like minestrone soup and, um, you know, chili and things like that. And then uh, she needed water. We took her water. Every day we're asking her, what do you need? Today it's almond creamer for coffee. So we <laughs> took that down her butt. But, you know, Good for it's, you. Such, a, it's such a joy to do that. And I know mm -hmm. that when I was going through my very difficult time with Beth, people would just show up with food or pretzels mm. or, or just to say hi and give us a hug. And man, it meant the world to me. And people often don't ask. So we need, when we have fellow, a fervent love for our fellow believers, we need to be aware of their needs. And we need to really be thinking how we can meet them, how we can put love into action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a couple other things that it does is it's number one, it's obedience. God right. tells us to love. So if we're not loving, then we're not being obedient to God. And then, of course, he said, you'll know we're Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. So obviously, as we prepare and plan for the end times, love should be on the front burner of everything we say and do, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really should. Yeah, it, which, of course, yeah. leads right into the next one, which is being hospitable to others. Peter talks about that in the ninth verse as he's walking through some of the things that we should be doing as we prepare for the end times. And he said, be hospitable, be hospitable to others, even strangers, without complaining. It's real easy to help your friends. It's real easy to help your neighbors, people you really like, or people that can do something in return for you. But... 
are you being hospitable to the stranger? You know, mm-hmm. Hebrews tells us <clears throat> that you might be entertaining angels unaware. You know, right. he, he said right. it is so important to do that. And it, it reflects unconditional love. Once again, it shows that we're Christians and, you know, it creates opportunity to share our faith. If we're being hospitable to someone and helping, that opens their heart. It opens their mind to be more receptive. Maybe they're in fear as to what's going on in the world today, and we can help alleviate that fear and yeah. just a matter of helping the needy. If there's a need, fill it. And that's part of being hospitable. That's actually a it's a gift of the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit to have hospitality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing it reminds me of, Terry, when we were with Danny, um, we were in Dan and I were in the front seat of the car, and you and Scott Lang were in the back seat, another friend of ours from school. And this little old lady was trying to get across the, the street there, remember, to get to the shopping center? Yeah. And you and Scott jumped out of the car, and you helped her across. I'll never forget yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I remember, Brian, you yeah. wanted me to speed up. I did. I, I said, yeah, I get him now. No, no. I <laughs> think points. you can beat her. I think yeah. you can get past before she crosses. <laughs> Of course, and she Brian, got, she got we there know faster we, than you did. But. We know we have yeah, to be we, hospitable to, to Terry because it says to strangers. I don't know anyone stranger than Terry. So. <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. I see what just, you did there. Just Ba-dum-boom. see what I did. It's just I a joke. You did there. Just a hospitable <laughs> joke. <laughs> um, but yeah. being hospitable to strangers, I like that. Yeah. And we use right. our gifts just like um, it says on our next point, number five. Um all of us have different gifts. I mean, not everyone is an orator, not everyone's a writer, not everyone's uh, an organizer, but everybody has a gift. And First Peter 4.10 tells us, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So we need to use what we have. Um, in this time that we're living in, which is the end times, uh, I, I, I saw uh, a program last night, and a gentleman on there said something I thought just hit me hit me hard, hit me at home. He said that we need to be out there right now using our gifts and to reach others. And we need to ask everyone, anyone you see, you need to be asking them if they're prepared. If they, do they have Christ in their life? He goes, if they, if they have an opportunity to receive Christ and they don't accept it, that's on them. But if you have an opportunity to tell someone and you you don't tell them, then that's on you. You failed. And I thought, wow, that just really hit home. And we need to use what God has given us because he will use it and he will multiply that. And if you have no boldness, he'll give you boldness. You think I'm too shy? He'll take that away. So he'll lead you to the people you need to talk to, need you who you need to be witnessing to, who you need to be serving. Which is why we formed Fearless Faith. We thought, what can we do? Mm -hmm. We can speak, we can write. We can do, create videos. Um, but so often I hear what you just said, Brian, that people say, oh, I'm too shy. I can't talk to people. Well, I mean, hey, the stakes are high. Yeah. It's, yeah. We yeah. have to get out of our comfort zone. In, in using our gifts, that's often the case. I know some people are afraid to commit time to the church or to a new program or whatever. And, and I often hear, oh, I can't write or I can't speak like you. Well, there's something everybody can do. You can usher, you can uh, get involved in worthy causes. Right now, our church has a collection drive for needy children across the, the bridge in a, a um, lower income area. And, um, you know, that's something we can all get involved. We need to look right. for those ways now mm-hmm. more than ever, wouldn't you say, Terry? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and being a servant, that's that's one of the fundamental foundations of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. And God tells us so much to serve. It's an outgrowth of our faith. And when you think about it, God promises to provide every need a person has or a Christian has. And sometimes, frequently, he uses a fellow Christian. He's expecting us to step Mm -hmm. up to serve others as the way to meet that person's need. If we don't do our part, then we're leaving a Christian in need and someone else is going to have to come around to do it. But God will mm-hmm. see that it's done. Right. Yeah. A few years ago, the group Alabama, I uh, kicked off their uh, first ever gospel CD, inspirational CD on QVC. And one of the songs 
that Randy wrote was uh, called Angels Among Us. Mm. And it's, uh, you know, I believe there are angels among us sent down to us from somewhere up to above. They come to you and me in our darkest hours. And as you hear the song, you realize the angels among us are us, you know, mm-hmm. fellow believers, people who step up and, and hear that divine call. So, yeah, using our gifts, Brian, that's so important. And sometimes that involves stepping out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Um, Our next point is do all things for God's glory. Boy, there's one for you. (laughs) So many times we think we're doing it on our own or on our strength, and we are tempted to say, wow, look what I did. Boy, it's all God. We owe everything to him. In 1 Peter 4, 11, uh, says, if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone yeah. serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Could it be that everything we do can be for God's glory? I mean, even just speaking a word of encouragement to somebody, it may not sound like much. But when you do it to God's glory, oh, my, you're way out of your your league and, and oh. you're beyond yourself, but you're doing something great. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, I think we did an early podcast on it, but the idea of everything you do is with the view of eternity in mind. Right. Mm-hmm. And this goes right along with that. Everything we do for the glory of God, if we have an eternal mindset as we get up in our day and everything we think about has eternal consequences. Yeah, I watched a movie a couple of weeks ago that was in the theater called After, I think it was called After Death. And one of the ladies who died and came back, one of the things she remembered most distinctly was, you know, if we do something for someone else, that's beneficial and we see them do something and we go, oh man, we help this person and and they help that person. That's two degrees out. Well, it was interesting to me that when she saw heaven, she saw 30 degrees out of Mm -hmm. some of the things she had done on earth, how it impacted that many people. And I don't think we think about that, but that was overwhelming to me that if we look at everything we do today, we will not know till we get to heaven how right. extensive the results are of doing things for God's glory. Mm. I want to see that movie. You saw it, right, yeah. Brian? Yeah. 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 What stood out I, to you about it? Um, I, uh, what Terry just said there, that that's that spoke to me as well, because I knew it was coming. They mentioned, somebody mentioned it, that uh, you're going to be surprised when you when you hear how far out your, your witness will go or, or helping others will go. Yeah. And um, when they said that, I thought, wow, it's, it, it, it makes you think. You, stay, you start going back and thinking, what, not only what I've done work-wise or, you know, around in church-wise, but around other people. And I thought about how much negative I put out there, to tell you the truth, instead of the good. Because <laughs> mm, uh-huh. it, it made me reflect, thinking, yeah. hmm, you know, I, I, how much did I hurt other people instead of help in those times? So yeah. it, made, it made me think about that hard. Yeah, Terry and I have been meaning to talk to you about that. But <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do yeah. that off screen. Yeah, we'll do it offline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need an intervention right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, John Matarazzo, our fine uh, producer, uh, interviewed, I think it was the uh, producer, one of the producers of that movie. And I remember when she was talking about that, it was like a pebble dropping and you see all yeah. the waves spread out. And you don't realize that. And we've talked, the three of us, that we'll never know the effect, the impact that Fearless Faith Ministries have had or this podcast mm-hmm. until we get to heaven. But we're always surprised the, the things that people write us and how it's helped them. And it seems like uh, God always knows. Um, the other day I, I did a, a, a take on, a, I did a couple takes and uh, I was talking about, are are you broken and do you need fixing? And I was reading these verses, and for some reason, the first two takes, I only read the first verse. And for some reason, the third third time, I said to go read, go ahead and read the next verse. After God says, "I will rebuild you," He said, "And you will dance again." 
Mm-hmm. And this lady wrote me and said she just tears came to her eyes when she heard me say that. She said that was so for me because she'd been in a car accident and had been through therapy, years of therapy. And she was a dancer in her younger life. And that's what she looks forward to. And she said, when you knew that, it just, when you said that, it spoke to me. Those are mm-hmm. things, I don't know why in the third take I read that. And that's the take I used, you know, mm-hmm. but God yeah. uses those things. Yeah. Well, man, we're, we got to keep moving. Well, um, where are we? So I guess, uh, Terry, you're next. I did all things for God's glory. That's, that's Yeah, another one. thing he tells us to do is not to fear. And in 2 Timothy 1, 7, we all know this verse. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And so we always hear that, don't fear, you shouldn't fear. It's almost a sin to fear. Is it a sin to fear? Because when you think about it, Uh, fear is part of our emotions that God gave us. I mean, would Mm -hmm. we be fearful if we don't know where our next rent payment's going to be or if we got a health diagnosis or our job was in jeopardy? It's human nature to have fear. So we're not robots. We are going to have those emotions. But I think what he's saying is, and what the Bible tells us, is that even with that fear, what do we do with the fear? Who do we go to when we're fearful and how do we overcome the fear? And that's the key because fear is powerful, but God is more powerful. And first John four says that there's no fear in love. When we're surrounded by God's love, that casts out fear. So that's a good example. And and in, in uh, Psalms, I was, you know, David, he's great. He was fearful as well. And in Psalms, it says, the Lord's my light and salvation. So whom shall I fear? He was fearful, but he didn't have to because he relied on the Lord. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear evil for you're with me. And he said, I sought the Lord. He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So there were fears there. But if we'll trust in the Lord, if we'll rely on the Lord, if we'll be in his presence, we can overcome this fear that end times seems to allow to rush in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 12 years yes. ago, I was going through a really difficult time, and uh, I ended up in a, a, a mental facility. And uh, they kept telling me, Dan, you got to get out of these sessions. You got to be more sociable. You got to quit reading your Bible. But I kept coming back to Isaiah 41:10, which says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I read that over and over. I read Isaiah 41 over and over. And that verse Hmm. and that chapter got me through, and ultimately that's what pulled me out, and God broke through, and I began to truly heal. Um, Mm -hmm. But fear can be crippling, can it, Brian? It can be. As you know, I went through a about with that too, where I didn't, I didn't know what I was afraid of, but I was afraid of something. My hormones were all off balance. And it's, it's amazing because you just sit there and I'm sh- shaking going, I have no idea what I'm afraid of, <laughs> but something hmm. was hmm. making me fearful. So my, what I was doing was I was singing in my head. I was reading verses. My cousin Marlene sent me a bunch of verses that would really hit home. And I kept singing, peace, peace, wonderful peace. And the more I would sing that, the more I would, I would come down from the fear and come off the ledge like that. And I just kept re, uh, re- referring to that because that is true peace is come, can only come from Christ. And yeah. that's what I had to, that's what I had to go to. And that's what I stood on. And I believe that. And, you know, it's, it's like, I tell everybody, if, if, if we don't agree on things, one thing, if we can't agree on is, is the Bible. My the Bible is my true North. If you, if that's not your true North, then we're never going to agree on things. <laughs> But that's my true north. And I I know it says that God is peace and um, he gives us peace. And I I stood on that and he delivered. Yeah. Okay. Well, man, guys, (laughs) we got to keep moving here. What's number eight, Brian? Well, well, it goes right to it. Testify to the truth about God. And in Revelations 12, 11, uh, it says they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In other words, they overcame the deceiver or, or Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And we got to depend on that. 
we know that God, Jesus shed his blood on the cross for us. And we have to stand on that because that's the truth. And that comes from the Bible. I said, that's again, that's a true north. And that's a platform you could stand on and you can believe in and you could testify to. And there's no way that can be disputed. I mean, it's history. People know that Christ was on this earth. They know that he died. They know that he arose from the dead and that he ascended into heaven. It's been proven. Uh, people had saw it and had seen him live, seen this happen. And you could see by all the disciples and the people that were discipled through Jesus that went out and started these all the churches and started spreading the word. And all the disciples, um, most of them, I should say, except for one, they, died, uh, they were martyrs. They were yeah. not gonna. They were not gonna say no. This isn't true. I saw it. I heard it. I know it. It was there, and they testified to it. And that's what we're supposed to be doing now too: is testifying to that. And when people say they they're too shy to witness, I say, tell your story, your testimony. So, they overcame the deceiver by mm -hmm. their testimony and right. the power of God's word. I mean, people can argue all day about theology, but they can't argue with your experience and your testimony. Right. So just tell it. If you want to witness. Yeah. yeah and if, if people want to know or hear more about that, we did two podcasts. One was uh, number 83, where we just talked about witnessing and sharing. And then mm. 107, we just recently did on telling mm -hmm. your story. So those right. are two great ones to go back yeah. to and listen to. I think Let's Terry's see. our podcast historian. His, there we go. He's our <laughs> podcast <laughs> Torian. Castatorian. <laughs> Something like that. He goes like back it. into the vaults and finds right, the yeah. old episodes. All right. Uh, Number nine, and this is a big one, guys. We've got to study God's word mm. and know how to use it against the devil. Ephesians 6 17. Uh, I'm reading from the New International uh, Version. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's mm -hmm. our sword. Remember, we used to do sword drills, Bible yeah. drills, yeah. but it is. Um, and if you look over in Matthew 4, when uh, Jesus was being tempted by the devil, what did he do? He quoted scripture. He said, you know, man shall not live by bread alone. Thou shalt mm -hmm. not tempt the Lord thy God in verses 4 through 10 we read all about it but and eventually the devil left him he couldn't compete with god's word and the devil knew god's word but jesus was reminding yeah. him of it the devil tried yeah. to use the word against him but he was taking us out of context and christ said no no that's not it right and i had to tell him set him right, right. but boy yeah, terry if this, there's ever been a time we need to know the bible it's now it's the truth. Second Timothy 3.16, all scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If we want to move toward perfection, it's not going to come without the word. The word is right. going to really bring the dross to the top. And mm -hmm. we've got to have it. And then within that process, we can begin to do things like forgive others. And that's the mm. last point is forgiveness. And mm -hmm. we all know how important it is to forgive so we can have a clear conscience ourselves. If we don't forgive mm -hmm. others, he doesn't forgive us. Right. He tells us to forgive 70 times seven. There's no, <laughs> there's no questioning the importance of that and what that means. And if we can get that in our spirit to some people, it's a hard, hard thing to do. There's some things that in the flesh, you might think it would be impossible, but with God, you're able to do it. And that helps bridge and deepen relationships with others as we see the end coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've done uh, things on forgiveness too. And by the way, one place you can go if you want to get some of our past episodes of Finish Strong is the Charisma Podcast Network. If you go on their page and scroll down, you'll eventually see our picture and Finish Strong. And you can click on our logo and you can find every episode there uh, so that you don't miss one. But yeah, that's that's a good one. Practice forgiveness. So many people hold on to grudges. And we've talked about how it doesn't hurt uh, the person that they're holding the grudge against. It right. just hurts them. Right, right. right. Yeah. Well, you know, we need to be finishing strong as the end draws near. And these 10 things are so important. So I'd encourage everyone to read uh, Ephesians 4, 
And then Psalm 122 and Isaiah 41. There's, uh, and First Peter 4 just it tells you the 10 things, but let's review them. Be clear-minded and exercise self-control. Pray always. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Have fervent love for fellow believers. Not just love, but fervent love. Boy, that's really an intense love and in putting it to action. Uh, be hospitable to others, even strangers, without complaining. Mm-hmm. And use your gifts to serve others. Do all things for God's glory. Do not fear. Testify to the truth about God. Tell your story. Study God's word and know how to use it against the devil. Put on the full armor of God and practice forgiveness. It's as Forgive simple us. as that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ten things. Easy I like peasy. It. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that the end is drawing near. And uh, boy, you know, I try not to dwell too much on the news because it can get depressing. But man, people that don't know the word, they just be once you know the word of God and the prophecies and you see them come truth, you're like, wow, there's no doubt. This Mm -hmm. is truth. This book is true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we have an unfair advantage. It's like knowing the end of the basketball game. If you record the basketball game, but you already knew that your team won, you can Uh, just sit back and relax. No stress. That's true. That's kind of the way it is with the scripture. (laughs) As a Christian, we know how it ends. We can sit back and relax. That's a good analogy. Like like if someone were to steal signs in football, they don't need to do that because they're probably the best team in the land anyway. Oh, so brother. Well, he always has would. a way of bringing that back around. Did I say anything about Peter Michigan? I didn't stadium. say anything about no Michigan. Wonder. No, I see it. <laughs> hey, I think we're out of time. I think we better wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, uh, another great podcast. Uh, in our next podcast, we're going to answer your questions. So stay okay. tuned to Finish Strong. God bless you, and thanks so much for listening. Thank you for listening to Finish Strong. For more information about Finish Strong and Fearless Faith, check out their website, ffaith.org. Make sure that you rate and review this podcast to help more people accomplish their God-given purpose so that together we can finish strong.